All right. We're live in the collection. Uh, connection looks stable. Welcome everybody to part eight of Alan Wake 2. And happy Monday to each and every one of you. Hope you had a wonderful, fantastic weekend. Special shout out and thanks to all of my Twitch viewers. I see all of your follows and uh, your messages that I get over the weekend after my Thursday night broadcast. And I'm uh, astounded and humbled that you guys keep finding me even when I'm not live. So many thanks to all of you. Uh, we are live on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook today. Good to see you, Toby, on Facebook. Mogster is with us today on Twitch. Happy Monday, Mogster. Harold J on Facebook. And, of course, our regular cast of uh, characters on YouTube today. Slatty Bartfast, Mr. Virus, Retro Wave, Sarah, James Trucker, Julian Z, Cat5, Alt, Grendel, Laura, uh, Laura Elstad, Hunter Jersey, Mike Manigold, Tony J. So glad to see each and every one of you today. Bit of uh, sad news this Monday. Um, headlines this morning that James uh, McCafferty, I believe his name is, uh, the voice of Alex Casey, or Alex Casey and Trench and Max Payne, the voice actor, has died today at the age of, uh, I think it was 65, due to uh, complications from lung cancer. So um, we'll have to remember as we play through the game today, uh, take, a, uh, take a moment to appreciate the acting of Detective Casey as we explore the game today. But uh, yeah, Sam Lake went on to... Uh, Twitter to express his pain and uh, his uh, condolences to the family. That's two actors in the Remedy wheelhouse that have uh, died this year, as far as I know, uh, both of whom had uh, had a role in Alan Wake too. It's it's just sad for everybody at Red at Remedy and of course all of the fans all over the world. Good to see the Elder Irish, Steve Whittlefy. Whittle, Whittlefy? Whittlefy. Red to Hoth, the Wiz, Ladmire90, all on to which today. Tony J says, gaining that low, growly voice finally took its toll. It's such, it was such a recognizable and characteristic voice. Um, I can see why they wanted to use that voice all over the place. In Max Payne, the primary titular character, in uh, Control, Director Trench, which was another character whom we um, heard his voice during flashback scenes, during the uh, iconic silhouette flashback scenes that we again get to see here in uh, Alan Wake 2 whenever we find an Echo, because it's the voice of Casey who, um, who shows up during the Echo. Uh, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's an iconic characteristic voice and it'll be missed. Mr. Red on YouTube says, Hey, Oxron, what's your favorite weapon from each Fallout New Vegas DLC? Um, well, it's, it's going to have to be the Survivalist Rifle from the Honest Hearts DLC. I thought the Honest Hearts DLC uh, was probably... It wasn't my favorite uh, Fallout New Vegas DLC. It was probably in the middle somewhere. Or, or towards the end. Uh, however, some of the ca the characters in Honest Hearts, like Joshua Graham, were amazing. And the reason I love the Survivalist Rifle primarily is because of the story. The story that accompanies it is just heartbreaking and real and amazing. So, and, and the Survivalist Rifle on its own is pretty cool too because it's so unique. It's... Uh, it's got a unique skin. It was hand carved. Somebody had fiddled with the sights on it. Uh, someone at one point had tried attaching a scope to it, but then had the scope removed, and yet that damaged the iron sights, which is like, you come up with that idea. You're a game designer. You're like, well, we're going to have a regular gun, and it's it's not going to have a scope. It'll have iron sights, but the iron sights are damaged because somebody tried to affix a scope to it in the past, so they're all bent, and it's just got this little 
it's bent to the side, so you gotta you gotta figure out how to use it. But once you figure it out, it, it aims really well. It's it's got a lot of character. I love that weapon. Uh, to uh, Risky Mage says, good afternoon, Ox. I finished Alan today, uh, uh, two days ago, and I love the rock music in it. Yeah, that's one thing that Remedy does really well, is musical sequences. And they, they, they almost go over the top in Alan Awake, too, because it's, like, after every, uh, part within an act, they fade to black and then they play a song. <laughs> and oftentimes, it's a completely new song composed just for that particular fade to black moment. But in Control, they had wonderful musical moments like when we were on the train going through the tunnel and all of the bright lights were flashing. That sort of uh, dance sequence was immaculate. And then of course, uh, all of the, the rock music in this game due to um, Heroes of the Fall and all that is just great. So they, they do music well in almost all of the Re Remedy games that I have played. Okay, where were we? Darn. My goodness, all um, this month has just gone by so fast. I can't believe that it's almost. Uh, we're almost in the the uh, to the twentieth here. It's the eighteenth. I feel like I've got so much to do and yet that I've done so much this month as well. I'm ready for 2023 to be over, I can tell you that. Uh, this year has been a rough year. It's been a good year in many ways as well, but it's also been a rough year. Looking for 2024. Speaking of which, uh, the plush. The plush is selling well. Uh, so, we only have 300 units, and if you want to snag one of them before we run out completely, now's your opportunity to grab one. On YouTube, I have this pinned in, uh, the shopping section. It's also on the shopping tab of my YouTube channel if you need to find a link to it. But yeah, the plushie is limited availability. We've only got 300 units, and uh, it's selling well, so now's your chance to snag one before we completely sell out. Torque MX on Twitch says, lol, I was just listening to your YouTube channel at work and then just got the notification that you're live. <laughs> That's great. I'm glad you can watch my stuff at work. Uh, but yeah, I'm live and I hope you can watch me today while you're working. Let's pick up where we left off. Sarah on Twitch says, Ox, how do you justify the Institute? Like, I don't see how a large group of human scientists would agree to get rid of mankind. Doesn't survival instincts cause humans to literally do the opposite? So I don't justify the Institute at all. I think the Institute is uh, corrupt and evil. It's the evil faction of Fallout 4. Uh, but I think that people will justify the Institute and overlook the evil the Institute does. Um, and the Institute itself thinks that it's the good guy, right? They think that they're doing good for the world and they, they justify the evil actions they do by giving up on humanity, right? They are convinced that humanity is doomed to fail. And this is a problem with any faction that thinks they can predict the future. And it happens time and time again uh, in the real world and in fiction when people say, oh, this particular event is destined to happen. So in order to avoid that, 
or in order to not be damaged by that event, we must do X. And X is almost invariably extreme and violent and evil. But they justify the extremeness and the evil because this other event is going to happen, right? And when it happens, we'll be glad we did X. That's what the Institute is doing right now. They think humanity is doomed to fail. Yes, it's been 200 years and there's still humanity, but it's still only a matter of time. Humanity is still doomed to fail. They're all going to die out. The surface dwellers are going to die. And when they do, all that will be left is the Institute and our synths, right? They think, they see their synths as a natural evolutionary step of humanity. Even though they are manufactured, they think that that's the next step humanity is to go down on this path of human evolution. So that's how they justify it to themselves. Sarah says on Twitch, uh, yeah, that kind of makes sense. But in my head, I was like, wouldn't people fight against that for humanity? Well, yeah, that's what happened at the during the Commonwealth Provisional Government, I imagine. We don't exactly know what happened, what went on when the Institute tried to get the CPG together and work with the people topside. But I bet it probably went something like, oh, you, you guys are making synth synthetic humanoids and, and you're going to be taking our resources above ground, including our power, in order to do that? Yeah, no, we don't like that because we need power to, you know, live. That's probably how the conversation went. And then the Institute is like, oh, wow, these guys are so not helpful. If only they were robots that we controlled. That would be much easier. Screw these guys. We're going to go back underground. <laughs> so the people topside did fight against it did not like it, but they didn't have the power to stop it because the Institute has greater technology. Okay. Okay, we were playing Saga. When we ran out of time last week, and that's right, we were exploring the Wellness Center. Um, we had just finished exploring the Wellness Center, though, didn't we? Oh, we were exploring the basement before moving on. That's right. How's our inventory looking? Let's uh, make some room here just in case we discover some good loot. All right, I've got two of those, so we'll move one of these over here. Okay, we're actually starting to get more loot on Saga here. That's good. All right, got two flares. We've got shotgun ammo. We've got regular ammo. Oops. Where did it go? I tried to move it. Did I discard it? Oh well. Oh, there it is. It's back. Okay. So we came in through there and we've got a laundry room and a storage facility around the corner. Can't be opened on this side. Oh man, come on. Doesn't budge. Ah. 
Aha. I can't force it open. Okay, so I think we may have uh, discovered everything down here that we can discover. Oh dear. I think we may have discovered everything we can discover down here. Is that, uh, is that Vladimir? I think that might be Vladimir with the knife in his face. Remember we saw that note saying that he was going down into the basement, wasn't he? I think that's what the note said. Okay, so we need to go into the overlap. Uh, we've got... Two locks here, both of which require the bolt cutters. And then we haven't even begun to explore this section down here. Let's quickly go back to our case board just to make sure we've got everything. Yeah, we've got a few more things we need to piece back together. Ah, but both of these are for later. Rescue Tor from the Overlap, find a way into the Overlap, profile Odin about the song, and find the record. That's right, we needed to talk to Odin about uh, the record in order to get into the Overlap. And to do that, we shall start with profiling. Hold on, let's mark one of our television things off. I believe we already saw this. Yeah, I'm a beer, Bright Falls Blend, Coffee World, Parade Floats, and Adventure Tours. That's all Ilmo. I'm so sad that he's part of the cult. He's such a fun character. Odin. The record. The page mentions a missing record. Do you know where it is, Odin? Driven by passion. Raging like a storm. Your grandfather made the song to apologize. To your mother, Freya, and to you. Tours like a storm. Your mother did the right thing, leaving with you, even if it broke your grandfather's heart and mine. Listen to the song, Saga. It's all there. Tor only had one record made. He keeps it in the museum. Ah. Odin knows my mom's name. He's saying my mom took me away when I was still a baby. Plausible. Stay on task. The record is in the museum. Okay, well now we have the key. Oh, uh, but we can't because they're not the do bolt cutters. How do we get in? We can't go that way because of the bolt cutters. I guess we got through the front door. Alright. Really, we gotta go all the way through the wellness center to get there. Even though the door is right there. Oh wait, there was a side door. There was like a... Yeah, right here. Yay! Okay. We need to go to the wellness center. Or not the wellness center, the museum. That was the locked door uh, on a floor above. Hey, there's, uh... Is that Adi's? No, it's not. I'm gonna want to go back to 
uh, Alan Wake story here in a bit. Okay, if we've got if we've got a light spot here, that means we're gonna find enemies inside the old folks' home. Oh dear. So everything has changed now that we're out of the wellness center. Poseidonet says, uh, do you always stream on Twitch too now? Or is that just a one-time thing? Uh, last month, Twitch changed their rules so that they no longer penalize players for multi-broadcasting. Previously, they would have, um, they would have uh, removed the partnership status of any, uh, any streamer who was multi-streaming to other platforms besides Twitch. It was a stupid policy, a backwards policy, and one that they finally figured out was bad. So they removed that policy, now allowing me to stream anywhere I want to. And so now I'm back on Twitch. And I will be for the foreseeable future, unless they change their policy again, in which case I'll go back to just YouTube and Facebook. All right, just making sure that we're not missing anything before going upstairs. Okay. Where's the staircase? There it is. Odin stuck in bed. Odin Anderson stirred in his bed, his vision hazy, smudged. He felt weighted down by an ocean of dark water. Through the haze, he made out Saga. Odin felt useless. He wished he could tell Saga how his silly faces made her smile when she was young, too young to remember. Odin used to joke that Tor was her grandfather, but he was the Allfather. He smiled at the memory. Odin was the kinder of the Anderson brothers. Tor lacked patience, more volatile. The brothers fought a lot, but they were inseparable. Now Tor was missing, dragged into darkness. Odin could feel it. Time was running out for both of them. Well, I hope nothing happens to Tor and Olden. I mean, you can't have an Alan Wake game without the old gods of Asgard, right? That'd be awful. Gustavo Plays says, Speaking of changed Twitch policies, I'm sad we aren't getting any artistic nudity from Oxhorn. Yeah, I feel like, man, I just, I didn't act quick enough. <laughs> they allowed topless streaming on Twitch for like four days there, and boy, the community sure took advantage of that. Man, they took advantage of that. <laughs> but I didn't get on it in time. No. Guess you're not going to see me in a, in a topless broadcast anytime soon. Okay, well, uh, Odin, Odin's room is way down here. This is where the museum is, but let's go check on Odin first. Is this new? I think this is new. The Sea of Night. To drink from the cup of the wise one, for wisdom to be a seer, I gave up my eye in the light of the moon to shine and see the many worlds to madness and beyond. Across the dark dreaming sea, the branching paths of the tree, I gave up my eye so many times. We have lived and died and been reborn. We have met here before, and we'll keep on meeting still. Where did I put the eye? Before time, I give it to Mimir to drink from the Well of Wisdom, the Cauldron. 1976, I took it out myself to see, drink the moonshine. 1988, he who stands on the threshold took it from me. Threshold kids? 
The time will come again to be writ again. All right, Odin. We can't talk to him, okay. Maybe we have some deductions to do. Yeah, the Anderson brothers. There's only one copy of the record. Tor kept it in the nursing home's museum. Okay. So with those complete... Um, the record. We've got two more for that. Odin. Mom moved away with me because of Tor. Tor wanted to apologize, but never got the chance. <clears throat> From the few things Mom said, this is actually plausible. Is it really true? What did Tor do to make Mom leave? Why did Mom leave? Okay, we checked on Odin. We can't really say anything to him. So let's go save and then head into the museum. We have the key. Akiel Cosmos says, Hi, Oxhorn. I ordered your Oxhorn plush. Can't wait to have you sit next to me while watching you. And remember, it's not sad if it's intentional. <laughs> Thank you, Makiel Cosmos. That's awesome. Yeah, they're available for pre-order now, and they should be here by uh, the end of March, beginning of April. Here we go. Old God of Gods of Asgard, Museum and the Hall of Fame. Wow, it's quite the museum. Anderson Moonshine. Trashed hotel rooms and ruined pools. Crowds go wild for the Old Gods of Asgard Ragnarok Tour. The rock and roll group Old Gods of Asgard are leaving chaos in their wake as they plow through the major U.S. cities on their aptly named Ragnarok Tour. The band is breaking their sales records with singles topping the charts and had their latest sold out concert in Long Beach, California. The fans show their love for the reckless rockers by showering the stage with lacy unmentionables, black roses, and even full beer bottles. None of this fazed the stars themselves who embraced the, the admiration and transitioned from song to song with such gusto that the audience was left catching their breath, eager to keep up with the brothers Anderson and their cohorts. After hours shenanigans for the musicians included a pool in a private residential neighborhood left to be emptied and sanitized, and a hotel room nearly destroyed in a classical fashion, not to mention the lengthy room service bill gone unpaid. All things point to this band quickly becoming a strong contender to the iconic Hall of Fame rock groups that came before them. Old gods of Asgard party like their namesakes and give a performance like no other. 
Be sure to catch them on their tour and bear witness to rock history in the making. Old Gods of Asgard band member dead. What? The legendary heavy rock band Old Gods of Asgard mourns the loss of their divinely talented guitarist, Bob Balder. Fat Bob, as he was affectionately and ironically called, died from complications of a severe illness. Leaving his bandmates Odin and Tor Anderson behind, the peace-loving musician will be sorely missed, also by the band's numerous fans. When asked about his loss, Tor Anderson had this to say, Get the expletive out of my face. Balder is in Valhalla now. He fought cancer like a hero. Bob was too beautiful a soul for this world, added Odin. What this means for the band and their upcoming album remains to be seen. Bob Balder. That's great. So you've got Odin, Thor, and Balder <laughs> in this, in this uh, band. Well, when is this dated? It doesn't have a date. Hmm. How long has their trio been a duo? Wade Speakerman says, I ordered my daughter her plushie today and expected delivery was March 4th to March 16th. Okay, uh, well, I hope that that's accurate. I'm doing everything I can behind the scenes to expedite uh, the production and delivery of the plushie. Uh, however, I want to emphasize that um, all of these, the, the manufacturer is holding off on production of the plushie until the 300... Um, uh, plushies are sold, which uh, should, will be sooner rather than later, uh, and uh, I, I think that our deadline for that is the end of Q1. So uh, I'm not sure why the website said that when you checked out, but just bear in mind it could be the very end of March, but I'll do my best to make sure those get shipped as soon as possible. Rock music is the ancient language of the soul muses old gods of Asgard's lead singer. I sit down with the Anderson brothers of old gods of Asgard fame in the lobby of a rundown hotel somewhere in downtown Detroit. Currently on their Ragnarok hit tour, the busy band members have only a moment to spare to a fledg fledgling journalist and his questions before running off to the soundcheck for the concert tonight. How has the reception been? Amazing. The fans understand what we're about. They get rock and roll. They get the spirit. They know we're not here to stink around. That's stinking right. Why do you do what you do? <laughs> I can tell you're new at this, buddy. Why does anyone do what they do? For the glory and the fame? For the money and the sex? Or because you have something inside you that's going to stink and burst out if you don't start using it. It's the latter. That's a good answer. How about music then? What is it about music that compels you? That should be pretty stinking obvious. This is boring me to death, bro. Let's get moving. Sorry, he's always impatient. As they stand up to leave for the tour bus waiting outside, the larger-than-life rockers turn around for one final quote. Music, especially rock and roll, is the ancient tongue of the soul, man. It's in me. It's godly. And it'll come out like a stinking thunderstorm. Okay, there we are. Oh no, it's gone! Is it gone? Yeah. Aga's remorse. This is the one. But it's gone. Cynthia has the record. She will tell me where to find it. Okay, there's Odin. That must be Thor, and that's Bob. Bob Balder. But we saw them during the big musical. Yeah, there he is, Balder. Thor and Odin. All 
All right, we gotta go find Cynthia. She stole the record. She knew how important it was. We gotta go to Cynthia's room. Crap. <laughs> I don't wanna go to Cynthia's room. Cynthia's creepy as heck. I feel bad because she was such an important character in the first game and she, you know, held back the darkness for so long for Alan Wake. She was the only one uh, in the town who really kind of understood what was going on besides Alan. And now in this game, she's corrupted by the darkness. She's taken. All right, where's Cynthia's room? That's gonna be all the way upstairs. Yep, Cynthia's room, third floor. Right next to Gail's. And there's Audie's room. And we've got new choices with Audie. Okay, let's go talk to Audie. Oh, we've got new choices. Oh, there's a conversation downstairs and outside as well. Oh, I think I kind of overheard them a little bit as we were going upstairs. Let's go get those new dialogue choices before moving on to Cynthia's room. Welcome to the emergency muster point. It's the emergency muster point. Yay. You all should stay out here a while. Until it's safe. I'm happy to get out of that house. Isn't it strange that I've lived in Bright Falls my whole life and I can't remember this building? The house has always been here, Norman. Remember when that poor Nora girl drowned in the bunker? Those Andersons got it so cheap because it's haunted. You get what you pay for. Wait, the bunker is here? The bunker is on the property? Oh, no. Are we going to have to explore a sunken bunker and the ghost of a dead drowned girl? Is there anyone who didn't show up? A few. Cynthia. Artie, Gail, Cynthia. If oh. they aren't here by now, then they aren't coming. It's important to be punctual. On that topic, I'd like to point out that our nightly decaf coffee service is almost half an hour behind schedule. <laughs> Have any of you noticed anything odd about Ms. Weaver? Just that Tor won't leave the poor woman alone. That brute wants one thing, and one thing only. Cynthia's gotten downright bossy. Take a swim in the pond, Norman. Drink some water, Norman. Well, no one tells Norman MacDonald what to do. Mandy May, are you all right? You're bleeding. Oh. Oh, my God. How did that happen? Oh, no, oh Mandy my God. May. Oh, no. Oh, don't be a crybaby, Norman. It's nothing. I just poked my finger knitting this monster of a blanket well maybe stop knitting mandy may gosh you're old it's gonna take you a long time to recover from this injury go wash your hands and stop knitting <laughs> just some bloody fingers that's awful oh poor mandy may hello there are you pat main from the radio that's me and you're the federal agent everyone's been talking about would you have time for an interview at some point Oh, sorry. I'm kind of in a hurry right now. Love your show, though. Very informative. Mm, thank you. Never a compromise on quality. That's my motto. We'd be happy to have you on the show any time. Me and my listeners. It's amazing well, that this one dude... Again. Artie said we'd be safe on the porch. Safe from what? I bet Tor is having one of his drunken fits again. This one dude with broadcasting equipment in an old folks home is able to put on a show that pretty much everyone in Bright Falls listens to. That's amazing. All right, let's go get new conversations from Artie. 
And then we'll check on Cynthia. Here comes the music. Do you know anything about the cult of the tree? Yes, yes. He who reaches for a spruce tree will stumble into a juniper. Plum was one of them. He has kicked empty. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in his shoes, but I like his shoes. <laughs> How did you know Blum was part of the cult? Oh, Fox never runs out of tricks. He's a crazy man, and he will show his ways. <laughs> Bloom like to talk. <laughs> I found an empty record sleeve. Do you know where the record inside went? Oh, the matter is not my business. Mutta niin, sanotaanko vaikka, että... But she who steals a needle, steals a nail. Wonders of the modern world. Music captured on vinyl, on tape. What will they come up with next? Tähne vielä keksi. I'm a man of the old union. The man speaks English, but you gotta find an interpreter to understand what he says. Even when he's speaking English, it needs to be interpreted because it's confusing. Hey. He who steals the needle steals a, na a nail? What? Okay, well, we talk to Adi. Can we get in there now? I mean, we do have the key. Do we go straight to Cynthia? There's Mandy May's room. We already explored that. Gail's room. Did you hear something? Let's see what's in Gail's room. Oh, it's a page. Building the Valhalla Nursing Home. Tony J says, you want me to do it, Oxhorn? How's Finn here? I mean, yeah, if you can translate the finish for me, that'd be great. I think the audience would love that. He says, uh, Van Han Lieten Mies equals man of the old union, an old-fashioned person set in his ways. Okay. Thank you, Tony J. Wheeler set up a foundation with the sales of their greatest hits album. He used the cash to build a nursing facility. The old men deserved it. Good bear. An old manor in Bright Falls. Wheeler hired a contractor to have it refitted as an old folks care home. At this point, Wheeler felt good about himself. He had a heart of gold. No need to feel guilty. <laughs> Wheeler left the work to the contractor and returned to New York City. He had done his part. It was time to turn over a new leaf. The contractors figured out Wheeler was gone for good. They took the money and ran. When the fall rains came, the leaks started appearing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Barry, man. Gotta stay to see the job to completion, Barry. Running off to... That is a creepy cup. It's a Coffee World cup. I want a Coffee World plush. Okay, well, if we found a page in here, I bet you there's something up there, too. Let's see if we can open it. I've got the key fob right here. I guess not. All right. Well, nothing for it. We've got to go to Cynthia. No use crying in the dark place. 
what has been has called. But trouble doesn't look like this. You can go to the basement and check the generator. I was just... But look out. You can never know in which tree the devil sits. <laughs> Adi, come the on! Basement. Thanks. Stop speaking in riddles, man! <laughs> you can never know in which tree the devil sits. All right, so this isn't gonna work. Key fob's no good without power. Because the key fob's no good without power. Gotta go to the basement. I'm doing everything backwards. I went to the basement first. I should have done this first. All right, well, Cynthia's gonna be down there. All right, where's, where's the... We saw Cynthia at the water. And then we just heard it bubble. The lights are out, so this is no longer a safe space. Cynthia? She's in the basement. Why did I hear this thing bubble? All right, let's go. All right, I have a feeling I'm gonna need the shotgun for this. <laughs> Not the crossbow. The TV room was the room with the light. glad I saved before I came out there. So a bunch of people come out of the lake and I need a more nimble weapon because it's a lot of them. So it's going to be the pistol. Yeah. <laughs> 
What the hell? God, they are just bullet sponges, man. Okay, uh, I've got two more pads left. I've got one of these. Gonna quick slot there. Whoops. Right, to the basement. And we already uh, got all of the jump scares out of the way, right? Uh, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> nope, we didn't get all of them out of the way. There's something in the water. Dear God. Dear God. Something in the water. Man. Alright, we already explored this. There is a safe room down here. There's the generator. We read this, remember, buy more fuses, many more. Crappy old equipment keeps blowing them. VB, that's the corpse. Well, that's a Vladimir. And presumably, that's the corpse we found on the ground here. Does this connect to the bunker? There's the fuse box. Fuse is blown. All right, gotta find the fuse. Maybe there are spares nearby. We tried this door earlier, it was locked. Must be locked from the other side. All right, so we gotta go down here and then around. I bet you that leads to the bunker where the girl drowned. Ah. Emmett Elwood had had enough. All his life he'd been surrounded by the same small-minded, impolite, ignorant people in town. Their endless gossip, their nose-picking, chewing food with their mouths open, not washing their hands after visiting the restroom, and touching things, <laughs> touching everything. The world was going to hell. He'd watch day after day how all the nice things in life in Bright Falls were spoiled and ruined forever. There would be a just and terrible reckoning. Emmett had imagined many times how he'd make them pay. He had lovingly tended his anger, made it grow hotter. It was out in the open now. Oh dear. Ugly and slobbering, they reached at him with their unwashed hands. He beat them down, beat them until they no longer moved. And then he'd wash his hands with a strong antibacterial disinfectant. <laughs> okay. I mean, I could empathize with him at the beginning there. I don't like germs either. But, yeah, then he went all kind of psychopath towards the end. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Don't like this. Can I open this? No. Well, well, well. The power's off. 
course. Of course. And there's something in the water. House of Zane, renowned filmmaker, establishes artist commune in Bright Falls. Was this the House of Zane? Thomas Zane? Thomas Zane, born Thomas Sien in Finland, <clears throat> and his partner Barbara Jagger, born Barbara Jakla in Finland, have recently established an artist commune here in Bright Falls. Mr. Zane has purchased the old manor house outside town, and the couple has already settled, settled in. Dear God, Thomas Zane used to live here. Then the girl drowned in the nearby bunker. Then the old gods of Asgard purchased it and turned it into a, an old folk song. This house can't get any luck, can it? In his home country and internationally as well, Mr. Zane is a well-known and respected auteur filmmaker, a rising star already compared to the likes of Stanley Kubrick and Ingmar Bergman. His earlier films, Nightless Night, won a number of European film awards. Mr. Zane is currently in the process of filming a feature entitled Tom the Poet. In conversation, Mr. Zane comes across as a charismatic figure with big dreams. He talks about building a hotel and a film studio in the area. He even has a, a name picked out for the hotel, Ocean View Hotel. This reporter believes the name has a nice ring to it. <laughs> it's just the most boring name ever. <laughs> it's just the Ocean View Hotel. It's the most boring name. <laughs> Mr. Zane's dreams would certainly make Bright Falls a household name if they became reality. Members of the commune clearly feel the same, seeing Zane as a person worth revering, even to a faintly cult-like degree, a person who guides his flock to expand their consciousness and reach a higher state of artistic inspiration with the aid of magic mushrooms. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, it, yeah. Okay, he's got a commune slash cult slash drug den. While the Bright Falls record does not condone the use of illegal drugs, we hope Mr. Zane will help put our town on the artistic map. <laughs> oh. Cynthia Weaver had always kept her lantern close. Someone in the bathroom with her. In the dark. Dark water pressed itself into her. She screamed. Cynthia Weaver hated being old. She'd been a doer. A fighter. Now the bathroom frightened her. Afraid she'd break her hip. Like Norman. Cynthia had always kept her lantern close, to hold the darkness at bay. Oh dear, my lantern. I think I've lost it, Cynthia said. This will put a smile back on your face, my dear, a voice said. A man's voice. Someone in the bathroom with her. In the dark. The light bulb had blown. She meant to replace it days ago. How could she forget? She had slipped getting out of the tub. She lay in the tub now. She lifted her hand. It looked wrong. Too many hands. In a black void with no sense of up or down, she was underwater. A dark shape pushed her down. Dark water pressed itself into her. She screamed. It came out in bubbles. Oh, poor Cynthia. She didn't deserve this. Hey. Oh, come on. There's always that one pushed up against the side. I gotta get it from an oblique angle. Why? Why do you do this to me? It's batteries, and I need them. I need the batteries. Thank you. 
273. There it is. Code is 273. Rose, if you see this, please remind the residents to leave my stuff alone. I think they hate me. VB. 273. Something's gonna pop out of there as soon as I get in there. Out of flares. There. Power's back on. Oh, I heard something. <laughs> Quick save. I know this isn't the way out, but... I want to make sure I got everything. Yay, batteries. Oh, there's this. Rose, spare fuse is now locked away because someone, Adi, keeps stealing them. Code is in the laundry room. Oh, I should have seen that. Why does Audi keep stealing the fuses? Let's go play that. We need to play that uh, recording. Is this something they watch on movie night? That looks just like Casey. What the hell is going on? Thomas Zane. Your turn, your. Tony J, I can't read any of this. What does it mean? One box. The battery's right there, and it's still stuck to the side. Get it? Oh! Why? <laughs> the physics engine is freaking me out now. Mimi Lundstrom says, Bah humbug! And also, hello! Hello there, Mimi. Good to see you, my friend. Black liquid clock is 
Cynthia! Hey, we're okay. There's VB. Come on with that! Don't need that anymore! Stefan Montoya says, why does Thomas Zane look like... Why does Thomas Zane look like Wake? Was that even him or Scratch? Good question, Stefan. I don't know why... I don't know why Thomas Zane looks like Wake. They, they briefly touched on that uh, when we were uh, playing Alan. In a previous episode, but I don't think they explained why the two look the same. Was running out. I'll make sure everyone's okay over here. Hey, everybody, you guys all right out here? Yeah, everyone's still okay. No new dialogue. No, all right, you guys just hang tight. I gotta go find Cynthia. over here. There it is. Okay, I've got plenty of these. Buddy, you go. You all right? Got anything to say about there all? There are pieces of chort on the floor, everywhere. The black stuff. See the thing. Very bad. I need to clean it all away. Perkelekko sotketa joka paikka. Translation, please. Kuka pan? Mika. Mitä sitä? Mika, mikä paikka tämä on? Where am I? Ari? This is not my home. I'm in a hell I want to go home now. What is this place? Hey, Satana. Hey, Satana. How did I get here? I'm lost. Lost at the sea. No, no lighthouse anywhere. And the storm is coming.
This is the first time in either game where we've seen Otty scared. He always kind of seemed to know what was going on, and his confidence made you feel at peace, but now he is scared. Down? Was Cynthia into civil engineering? Oh, okay. The Dark Presence uses people's memories, their fears to corrupt them. I went down to the basement today to check the lights. <clears throat> I can't trust Bloom to do it. He's too slow but it's getting harder and harder for me to reach them. I can't keep up much longer. The shadows are moving. There's no more light, no more lamps. I can't find my way out of the room. Someone locked the door. Did I lock it? Maybe Tom did. He probably did it to keep me safe. He's such a considerate man. Barbara doesn't deserve him. Tom could do so much better. Where did Tom's lamp go? I used to have it. I guess he took it back. That's fine. It was his after all. The shadows are moving? Did I write that? Nonsense. There are no shadows. It's just us. Tom and I. Forever. I found something funny while I was down there. A newspaper article about Tom. But it called him a filmmaker. Tom didn't make movies, he was a poet. A magnificent poet. I dug around and found film equipment, supposedly also Tom's. What is happening? This isn't right. I know it isn't. But Tom's movie was about a film. I'm sorry, sorry. Tom's film was about a poet. For later. Come on. An intro, uh, I'm sorry, an entry from Cynthia's journal. She was afraid, hearing whispers. Computer password. The record. Cynthia and Tor. Cynthia's fears made her vulnerable. That's how she became a Taken. A record is missing from the museum. Anger's remorse. Hmm. The missing record is one of a kind. The rest are all popular releases. It's profile Cynthia. Oh, we've got one for Odin as well. Anger's remorse. Anger's remorse is missing. Who took it? Our shame becomes the pale horse. Oh, Tor, bro. Tor's love for you is in that song. That's why Cynthia wants it, to ruin him. She made Tor lust after her. We fought one scratching hag years ago. Now he's fallen for another and we might lose him for good. One less Anderson. That isn't going to happen. Cynthia has torn the overlap. Anger's remorse is the key to get there. I need to make Cynthia reveal its location. The other hag that he fought years ago, is that Bar Barbara Jagger? Cynthia targeted Tor specifically. Why him? Deal with the nasty Anderson fellow. His heart was broken. Cancelled. Leaks started appearing. It was too late. 
shut her out of her own case. The Dark Presence is using Cynthia to keep me from talking to Tor. Cynthia was close to someone named Thomas Sane. Who is he? Tom was back. Tom had enemies. In a fancy hotel. Just his imagination. A nightmare started to creep in. Cynthia Weaver smiled. An old flame. Maybe Tom was taken. Where is Angus Remorse now? Kitty is a young girl in love. A rock and roll cliche. The shadows to come alive. A gift. An on of death wish. She has the record. I can get it out of her. If we can find her, we're in her room and she's not there. Angus Remorse. Where is it, Cynthia? Drowned beneath dark water. Oh, she threw it in Too the many pool. Hands. The bathroom frightened her. Cut short. She screamed. An old folks care home. Oh, it's there! The Angus Remorse record is in Cynthia's room. In her bathtub. Okay. Deduction available. Cynthia took the record and I brought it back. A bathtub, a pond, a lake. There's a theme here. Cynthia hid the record in her bathtub. It still had better work. Right, so, so this is about Tor. If Tor gave the record to Cynthia, she's the only one who can tell me where it is. All right, so this is all in relation to that. Let's get it back and finish this. But first, let's finish exploring her room. Oh. I'm guessing the woman in this photograph was not Cynthia's favorite. No, that was uh, Thomas Zane's wife. Barbara Yeager. I feel like I'm missing some context here. Yeah, table bathed in light. A lantern. Someone holding a lantern. Was Cynthia using it for protection? She wasn't. Did the she know yet. about the dark presence? A power station. Everyone needs a hobby, I guess. <clears throat> well, that's where she worked in the last game, right? When we found her at the end of Alan Wake One, she was maintaining the power station. She was the only one who knew that the light, besides Alan Wake, could keep the Dark Presence away, which is why she always carried a lantern. Oh. For a very special woman. Tor's a romantic, huh? But she seduced him specifically so she could get the record. A box of chocolate from Tor to Cynthia. Looks like Tor fell hard for Cynthia. Fuses! <laughs> she keeps replacing the fuses. Now she's got a collection of broken fuses in the corner of her room. Or maybe she kept those. Maybe these all work. And she kept these to replace the blown out fuse every time it blew. But it became harder and harder for her to get into the basement as she aged. She couldn't rely on Vladimir. Cynthia would deal with the nasty Anderson fellow, Tor, always poking people with his hammer. He had it coming.
Tor is not becoming a Taken, but Cynthia is definitely corrupting him. Trying to keep him away from me? Cynthia is doing all of this for Tom. Another one of the Dark Presence masks? Well, I want, I want to read the full manuscript page. Cynthia Weaver smiled. Lost without her lantern? Nonsense. Cynthia felt as giddy as a young girl in love. Cynthia had loved Thomas Zane. Tom only had eyes for Barbara. Barbara was bad news. Tom had seen it in the end. Cynthia had been there to comfort him. And when he left, Cynthia waited. Years of waiting. Now Tom had come back to her. They'd be together now. See the world. She'd always dreamed of seeing New York. They were there now in a fancy hotel. She drew a bath. She would become like Barbara. No, better. She sank into dark water, into Tom. Tom had enemies plotting against him. Cynthia would deal with the nasty Anderson fellow, Tor, always poking people with his hammer. He had it coming. Anything for Tom. All right, so did Mr. Scratch assume the identity of Tom, Thomas Zane, in order to seduce Cynthia as a way of taking Tor out of the picture? Anger's Remorse, by Old Gods of Asgard. I need to play it in the jukebox. As soon as- God! Enough of that! Look at all of those lamps and lanterns. <laughs> I gotta save. I don't want to do all this again. Adi, are you all right, buddy? Adi? Okay, I've got two flares. I've got one of these propane tanks. I've got a lot of darts. Six rounds of shotgun ammunition. Twelve rounds of handgun ammunition. One first aid kit. And I don't have a rifle yet. Oh, I need to go back and get the rifle. Why couldn't I get it? The doorknob. It wasn't the key fob. It was the doorknob keeping me from the rifle. I'm gonna have to go back. Where do I find the doorknob? I turned the wellness center upside down and I couldn't find a doorknob. Let's play it. What?
I'm in the light, Cynthia! Cynthia! The song will show me the way. She hides in the water when I get into the light. dead girl, where the ghost of the dead girl is, where the girl drowned. The overlap leads to the bunker. Crap. I've got two rounds of my battery left. Gone too soon? <laughs> Poor girl. Ah. I don't like this. Bright Falls record. The body of missing youth discovered in flooded bunker. The local girl, Nora Hesberg, age 15, who went missing on Saturday of last week was discovered dead in the sealed underground bunker near Valhalla Nursing Home in Bright Falls. Cause of death has been determined to be drowning. The incident occurred during a gathering of local youths at the bunker. Nora was first reported missing by her parents Sunday morning when they discovered their daughter had not returned home the night before. The police were contacted, and they received a tip to check the bunker from one of the victim's acquaintances. Police are treating the tragedy as an accident. The community mourns the loss of its young member. Gone too soon. Batteries. No, I want batteries. the drowned lady is there a map no i don't have a map Oh, 
Ah, <laughs> oh, trippy. Trippy. What? Oh. Five. I think I'm gonna have to pay attention to the numbers to navigate through this. L4. Or not. Okay. Well, I guess we're turning on a generator. just disappeared. Oh, ho, ho, ho. The light did that? All right. Was that Alan? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? I'm back here? But I'm getting new loot. Unless I missed that when I was here previously. It's the same note. But now it says Nora. But it's different somehow. It's a loop, like the others. I need to reach the center. Brad Ludwig says, looks like you need to solve a puzzle to get the knob. Yeah. Will I get the knob after solving this? Oh, is 
Is that the hotel? Cynthia. She's here. Dead end. Gone from five to four. Oh, back here again. to get wet. Oh, man, no. Well, nothing for it. I gotta open this door. Locked. The key has to be nearby. Hmm. Okay, I guess I'm getting wet. They're certainly giving me a lot of loot. I've only got one spot left. That's great. Key. Key. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's a bunch of ammo boxes. You'd think I could open one of those up. Nora, gone too soon. Yeah, that's gonna change to her daughter's name, won't it? What is this? What is this? All right, did I miss something? Just well, hold on real quick.
Okay, well, I didn't get the key there. Machiel Cosmos says, Hi, Ox, you missed Latte Lagoon previously flooded area at Coffee World. The doorknob you can find in the staff lounge at the wellness center. Oh, Latte Lagoon. I didn't realize. I thought Latte Lagoon was a lagoon. I didn't realize it was actually flooded. Okay, thank you. Staff lounge, wellness center. Latte Lagoon. No. Still need the bolt cutters. Hopefully I'll find them under here. <laughs> this is just trippy. got no slots left there's the key right um, so now I need to figure out how to get back all right it's this Cutters. Yes. Finally. So, uh, back here. Come in. Back here. There we go. There's the bunker. Slow down! Look restless! Ah. Okay, all right. That's still rusted, but we can now break through that. Did we explore this? Oh, deeper in, huh? Because I want that. Uh, did I explore this hole in the wall? I don't think I did. This is where she burst from, right?
Come on, give me a toolbox. I'm, I want to organize my inventory. interact with any of these. Oh, and we're back in this room. Oh, it does a big loop. Okay. Well, we gotta go down. back. Now it says, rest in peace, Nora, gone too soon. That one dude, Mark II, a member for 27 months, says, hey, Ox, I just rewatched your Fallout New Vegas series. It was a good binge. Anyway, hope you're doing well. Get ready for Christmas in six days. Cheers. Thank you. That one dude, Mark II, get ready for Christmas. T3 uh, a teachingly dude, I suppose is what he says, on Twitch, says, I started following you when I discovered your Fallout 76 videos on YouTube. My favorite game. Love how immersed you get into games. Thank you very, uh, very much, teachingly dude. And then he says, I'm, I've started playing Alan Wake Remastered today. Incredible game. I know, isn't it? I never got to play the remastered version. I played the original. I live streamed it here on the program before the remastered version was released. But it really got me into the world. Alt Grendel gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the YouTube community. Thank you, Alt Grendel, and congratulations to Garg Dargus. Sebastian Sanchez, KT, Brett Builds, and Angry Kitty. Thank you very much, Alt Grendel. Machiel Cosmos says, I heard about a monk who meditates with a light bulb. It he helps him reach enlightenment. Thank you, Machiel Cosmos. Back again. Gotta go deeper. Darth Luke says, did you know Lord of the Rings is re-replaying all three movies in select theaters after New Year's? I did not know that. I'm getting closer to tour. <laughs> He's like, it was fun for a while, but I'm getting tired of this.
I, I would love for my children to be able to enjoy the Lord of the Rings experience in theaters, but I still think they're a bit too young for the violence in them. <clears throat> um, not that I think there was too much violence. I think it was perfectly appropriate for the type of story that it was, but my kids are still a bit young. Power back online. No! Four. Saga! Where are you? Can you hear me? It's so dark. Oh, I'm sorry, kiddo. The hag tricked me. Tor, I'm here. I'm coming. You took Tor. I'm here to take him back. I need to get the lights on to reach him. I got it. Daga. It's so damn dark down here. I'm underwater. She's trapped me at the bottom. I don't think I'm gonna make it. I can't stay in the water. Okay, so as long as I'm not in the water, I'm okay. But where do I go to turn the lights on? Over there? There! Okay. I gotta get over there. Uh... There must be a way to get the power back on. I gotta get out of the water. Strength And now it's closed! Oh, this is tripping me out, man. Okay, so we just keep going. Yeah. 
You can apologize to him yourself. I'm getting you the hell out of here. Okay, we'll go over there. On a natural drain, but can we go down? Now my inventory is full because I'm getting way too much loot. I want to put it into the box. But I don't have a shoe box. Can we go down? We can go down. Right. Or through there. No, through there. That's the way we came, though. Cynthia? I can't, like, her attacks are so fast that I can't reload and I can't heal. All right, I think I can't use the crossbow for this because it's such a long reload. I managed to get two shots off on her. I think I'm going to have to use the pistol. It's cold. Dark. I can't see a goddamn thing. <sighs> Tell Odin. I'm sorry, I fucked everything up. You can apologize to him yourself. I'm getting you the hell out of here. And... Well, the, the flare helped for a little bit. It's cold. Dark. I can't see a goddamn thing. <sighs> Tell Odin. I'm sorry I fucked everything up. You can apologize to him yourself. I'm getting you the hell out of here. What the? What the? What the? 
can't. I can't. Why can't I use my number? Oh my god. Uh, that locked me out a couple of times. I kept on trying to heal, but I couldn't do anything. You can apologize to him yourself. I'm getting you the hell out of here. Sweet time to come save your grandpa, huh? <sighs> nice attitude. A family trait? Uh, uh, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Thanks for helping out an old bastard like me. <sighs> That's my job. Now, I've got some questions for you. <laughs> of course you do, sweetie pie. <laughs> and I got answers. <laughs> End of chapter. Oh, that boss fight was nasty. Look in the mirror. The Is this a new song? My face forever seeking 
to be whole Driven by passion Raging like a storm With thunder and lightning And the hubris I was born Blood hot and vain I risk to take it all Blind to your pain Well, I think we've heard this one before. remorse this is that uh, record that we found From the perspective of Tor. Okay, so Saga is the seer. She can break the curse. The story is harboring a liar. What story? Tor harmed someone. He's full of remorse. He harmed Saga's mom? How? Any more lyrics? Hunter says, by being a bad dad, probably. More will be explained later. Dive through the dark to find a light on the other side. You will find in there the peace you miss. Shame becomes a pale horse. The 
Okay, so what man did Tor drive away? Thomas Zane? You'll find him on the other side. He has the key. Hmm. Because he was in love with Barbara Jagger before he fell in love with Cynthia Weaver. Hmm. We need to talk. <sighs> Damn right. Lots for me to explain. But not here. The knight's got ears. We can have our talk in your head. You have a room there, right? How do you know about that? I'm your grandfather. <laughs> what don't I know? All right. We go straight to profiling. Well, Tor, it's time for a chat. Tell me about the Mind Palace. You have one, too? You know about my mind place? How is that possible? We all have the power. Find the truth. Damn right I do. Odin already told you you're a seer. You can gaze into their heads, see the truth. See past the lies. Past this bullshit horror story. <laughs> Us Andersons aren't bound by it. You can fight it. Don't be the story. Make the story. It's true. I am a seer. I have a power. My mind place is more than I thought it was. This isn't my intuition. I'm seeing their thoughts. Is this why I know the truth about Logan? While everyone else forgot? You said you were my grandfather. If that's true, why wasn't I told about you? You were part of our fucked up family. Way before this horror story. I was a shitty fucking dad to Freya. Your mom didn't deserve that. Not one bit. Things were said and done. Not a day goes by, I haven't regretted it. But that fucking father of yours didn't make things any easier. Drove him away! I know Freya is gone. So I need to apologize to you. I am sorry, Saga. I can see he's sorry. Mom said she didn't want anything to do with my grandfather. And that my father died before I could remember. It all matches. Tor and Odin are part of my family. So who's her father? Let's learn more about Freya. You said you were a shitty father to my mom. Is that why she left? Freya never looked back. My girl was strong. Freya always thought our powers had a dangerous side. Odin and me did fuck with things that should not have been fucked with. <laughs> Your mom had common sense. She raised you right. Kept you safe. I'm not surprised she didn't tell you about the Anderson power. She was always protecting me. Whenever I told my mom about my mind place, she called it make-believe. I wish she'd been more honest with me. At least towards the end. Yeah, she was just trying to protect you the only way she knew how. So who is her father? Mom wouldn't talk about my father. You knew him? Some doors are better left closed. Your dad was a complicated bastard. Always thinking too many steps ahead. That's not how we work. There was trouble, and then he was gone. I didn't handle it well. Freya didn't want anything to do with me after that. I can't blame her. I never knew my dad or my mom's family. So many broken relationships in my past. I won't lose mine. With Logan. With David. I won't stop until they're safe. 
All right, well, that's all we can get about her family past for now. So let's turn to the clicker. I have the clicker. Can I use it to save my daughter? An app? Get your guitar roaring and your drums crashing. Blow reality's eardrums. Just the light switch isn't enough. It's Tom's story we're dealing with, so he's got to be the one to rewrite it. After that's done, he can flick that switch to bring the whole thing home, baby. I can't use the clicker without Wake. Tom. Meaning Wake. He needs to rewrite the story first. I can't stop the horror story without him. Right, that gave us some deductions for the case board. But then once we're out of the mind place, we need to go get the rifle. Chad says the doorknob is in the office. And then we need to go back to the lagoon. Okay, Anderson Brothers. Wake wrote Logan into the story. He had no right to use her like this. There is still time to make him fix it. I won't give him a choice. True. <clears throat> but then what right does he have to use anyone, really? Tor is here, in the overlap. Gotta find him and get the fuck out. Oh, that's an old one. We already did that. I rescued Tor Anderson, my grandfather, from the Dark Presence. Wake wrote Logan into the story. She's in danger because of him. Within Scratch's reach, I need Wake to write an ending that will save her. All right, fact versus fiction. Ooh, lots of goodies here. And then two saved for later, possibly after we place these. Why did Mom leave? Well... Mom called the mind place make-believe. She didn't want me knowing about the Anderson powers. Was Tor the reason my father left? It sure sounds like it. Anger's remorse mentions the man I drove away. The way Tor behaved? I'm surprised my mom hung around for as long as she did. Tor he is genuinely sorry. Tor, not a good dad. Reckless. Pushing my father away was the last straw for mom. Yeah, well, we know that he did all of that, but how did he do all of that is my question. This would explain why my memories haven't changed like everyone else's. And then we've still got these saved for later. Hmm. The clicker la acts like an amplifier. Um, there we go. Hmm. So Wake writes a story. The dark place makes it change reality, and the clicker amplifies that change, making it permanent. Makes sense because woke I uh, wake wrote the story only wake can edit it wake needs to be the one to rewrite the ending and I'll need to keep an eye on him Does the overlap cause the flooding? <clears throat> Overlaps require pieces of art to enter. Is that because of the Dark Place's focus on art? A song about remorse, a float about murder, a poem about terror. I am seeing a pattern. All artistic works tied to dark events. 
And these are saved for later. Thanks for telling me this, Tor. I need to go find Wake. To stop this. The old gods of Asgard will be ready to help. Me and my bro will bring the rock when you need it. Remember, your daughter is alive. Just kept from you by this bullshit horror story. I needed to hear that. Thanks, Grandpa. Aww. Don't worry about me, kiddo. I'll drag my sorry ass over to Odin. A few shots of the Anderson's finest will fix us both up. <laughs> See you soon, Saga. The FBC is holding Wake at the Sheriff's Station. I need to make Agent Estevez understand. They have Wake and I have the Clicker. We have to work together to stop this. <clears throat> Bright Falls Station. Casey. Do you read me, Casey? Damn it. Where are you, Casey? He better be okay. Focus, Saga. Get to the station. To Wake. But first, rifle. I don't understand how I missed the doorknob. Ooh. Oh, great. Does this mean I've got more pages scattered around here? When Cynthia Weaver was downstairs at breakfast, Rose snuck into her room. With all the lamps in the room, it took her a while to find the one with an angel. Luckily, the dream Alan had sent her had been very clear. Rose was certain that Cynthia would not miss one lamp. She had so many. Tonight, Rose would put the lamp in a shoebox and let it sink into the garden pond. That's what Alan wanted. That's how she could help him. The thought made her whole body buzz with joy. Cynthia knew the lamp was missing the very moment she came back to her room. She was overcome by grief. It had been Tom's lamp, one of the few things that reminded her of him. It had not worked in a long time with the cord severed and the light switch gone. But there are other kinds of lights than the ones we can see. The invisible light of the angel lamp had held Cynthia together all these years. With tears welling in her eyes, she didn't see the shadow shifting in the corners of her room. <clears throat> so that's how she got taken. Rose took the angel lamp she had used in Alan Wake 1 and put it into the pond because Alan Wake told her to. Okay, where are we? There's the rifle. The security room. So is it a, there's an investigation here. That must be where the doorknob is. All right, so. Uh, okay. Up through rehabilitation. We'll do a save for good measure. And organize our inventory if we can find the shoebox. There it is. Let's see, I looted a lot, but I used a lot as well. Uh, I've got four bolts left. I don't need this one taking up inventory space. Let's move that there. I've got a lot of these paths left. Let's move some of them. Okay, I think that's good enough for now. Wait, I'm gonna need more room once I get the rifle. Shoot, it's gonna take up a lot of space. So let's move the crossbow for now. Let's go to security. Okay. Uh, I already checked out this computer. 
Okay, there's something in the cabinet behind me. In here, in the microwave? I already solved this, didn't I? All right, security door lock off. CCTV's on, medical wing alarm on, door unlocked. Yeah, I already went through all of this. Riddle for your rifle. Why did you take the doorknob to my personal room? I'm sick of old people tricks. Oh no, I didn't read this. You bring it back so I can get my rifle. I'm supposed to go on a deer hunt tomorrow. If you don't, I'll hunt you instead, V Blum. So the rifle is in. Or the, the doorknob. Or the rifle is in <clears throat> Blum's personal room. I'm a little doorknob that's out of place, but solve these clues and you can trace the way to your private space. I meet you at the greet, inside a bright glassy cage where pretty flowers bloom. I meet you at the greet inside a bright glassy cage where pretty flowers bloom. Reception? Pretty flowers. Okay, yeah, this was previously locked, which is why I didn't explore it. Okay, give me a doorknob. Hey, got it. The cult storms the lodge. Ilmo was nervous. His palms were clammy. He lowered his phone. Mulligan isn't picking up. Yako shook his head, pointed at his own phone. Same with Thornton. Ilmo didn't like it. No one was answering the phone at the workshop in Watery either. Something was up. It had to be the writer. Had to be. The Coscula brothers were crouching in the bushes across from the Elderwood Palace Lodge. It's light shining in the night. They couldn't wait any longer. The brothers knew Saga was in Watery visiting her trailer. Going now was their only chance to do this without hurting her. Ilmo stood up and a crowd of deer masks looked his way. Okay, this is it. The rider is the target. Take him down and it's all over. Only shoot the Fed if you have to. This is our big moment. We watch in the night. The crowd murmured the chant back to him. Ilmo turned his face to the hotel. He could see Saga's partner in the window. Ilmo slapped his brother on the shoulder. The brothers donned their masks. The cult of the tree was ready. <clears throat> Interesting that they didn't want to hurt Saga. Oh yeah. And there it is. Ready for a fight. If only I had that in the last fight. All right, we gotta pet the pet the moose here. And the deer. Hi there, little friend. All right, so I should go get my ammunition. Let's quick slot this.
Okay, well, we got it. There it is, 308 caliber ammunition. Well, I need more inventory space. <laughs> I need, this is getting ridiculous here. At least it's day. And now we have the bolt cutters. That's right. So much more opens up to us now. Are any new conversations available? There's a battery pack in the laundry room. How did I miss that? Oh, that's in the basement. Uh, that's why I missed that, because it was stuck against the side of the toolbox. <laughs> All right, I don't see any more conversations opened up here. So I don't think we need to talk to everybody again. So let's head out. Oh, that's right. I didn't take a, t a car to get here, though, did I? I didn't take a car to get here, so am I going to have to... I'm going to need the bolt cutters to go through here. But I feel like we've done Saga story for a while, so I want to try doing Alan Wake story. So I guess we run back. Okay. And there's the janitor's bucket. Let's switch stories. Don't forget, yes, that's why I'm here. We're going to do a manual save. Here we go.
Okay, we're back to Alan Wig. Let's take a look at our inventory. We've got our double barrel shotgun, the flare gun, and the revolver. Uh, two inventory spots left. I really need to upgrade his inventory space. Because look at all of this taking up spot, uh, space. And I need to start making better use of the flare gun. Find Alice. Get to Parliament Tower. All right, we explored the Ocean View Hotel when we were last here. Parliament Tower. There it is. Initiation six, return. needed to get inside the manuscript. How is everything from Barry Wheeler to Alice Wake? Hey Alice, everything's good with you back home? Just checking in. Tried to call but couldn't reach you. You're probably just deep in your creative process. I know how you artists get when you're in the middle of your projects. Everything else disappears. If you call back and can't reach me, I'm doing whatever it is an executive producer is supposed to do. Still a mystery to me. Oh, and if you want me to help with anything business related to your exhibition, just say the word, your pal Barry. I'll handle it. From Barry to Alice. Hey, Alice. Sharks circling. And they now want to turn what happened to Al into a movie and or a TV show and or, get this, a stinking video game. I told them to screw off. Also, in case you hear about this from someone else, a true crime writer named Tammy Booker is working on a book about Al. I hunted down her publisher and told them we'll sue. Don't worry, I've got you covered. Your pal, Barry. Checking in from Barry Wheeler to Alice Wake. Hey, Alice. Checking in because I haven't heard from you. Everything good back there? I've been trapped in nonstop meetings with no breaks. Open kimono. I have considered peeing into a mug and lunches be damned. How these people ever get a movie made when all they do is sit in meetings is beyond me. Joined a cult from Barry Wheeler to Alice Wake. Hey, Alice, you're going to think I've been replaced by an evil double, but I've joined a cult and I love it. Joking about it being a cult, kind of, blessed wellness retreat. Working with Al or the Andersons was tough sometimes, but these movie biz types are insane. My stress levels were through the roof, but then I was tipped off about the retreat. The best decision I ever made. I've never felt this good and, well, healthy. The guy who runs this place, Chester, is a doggone miracle worker, not a wacko in any way. I know you think I'm full of crap, but I've lost a ton of weight. You wouldn't recognize me. 
Chester says, I'm lucky to have ended up here, that something bad would have happened to me if I'd stayed in New York. I believe him. I wasn't feeling great after everything that happened, especially after those FBC creepos wanted to chat with me. Enough to turn anyone into a conspiracy nut. I hope you're good over there. Come visit any time. West Coast is not as bad as I made it sound in my earlier emails. Your pal, Barry. And then two years ago, greetings from Hollywood. From Barry to Alice. Hey, Alice. I'm more a fish out of water in Hollywood than I ever was in the Pacific uh, wilderness. These yuppies with their glow-in-the-dark teeth couldn't be more fake if they had six fingers. And everything is so stinking great all the time, even when it's in fact the opposite. More than once, I've thrown up in my mouth during meetings with these movie exec types. Or these movie exec jerks. But I gotta be here to look after Al's legacy. Everyone wants to gobble up the film rights for the Casey books, and they have moronic ideas of what to do with them. It's my duty to herd this horde of tinned zombies into the general direction of something resembling good taste. I'm painfully aware how deeply Al would have hated adaptations if they didn't do justice to his vision. He was a master of hating things deeply. For good reasons. I mean, that's why we loved him so much, right? Anyway, gotta hop onto another video call now and talk about casting. Your pal, Barry. Uh, let's check out the Red Room first. Alice had turned the bathroom into a dark room. These are the photographs she took of Scratch, I believe. No such thing as too personal. The photos are me. Just need to show a glimpse. Make you see what's beneath the surface. Okay. Shock, the, the guilt, fear. I could barely get out of bed. Barry Wheeler started visiting. He even cooked me meals. I couldn't stand the guy when I first met him, but he's a better friend than I gave him credit for. And he still checks in. Even after he moved out west. Good old Barry. Love. Part one, the depths, love is weakness. Trigger when viewer close intimate motion activated TVs. Alice's work had consumed the apartment her whole life. Her work is getting decidedly dark. Need to show you the truth. On all screens, the darker, the better. So she was designing some sort of walkthrough art exhibition to tell her story about Alan Wake and Mr. Scratch.
One morning, I saw a deer soar past my bedroom window. It was a, a balloon of some cartoon animal. And I looked out at the street below, and I saw a little girl crying. Like losing that balloon had just ended her whole world. It was the perfect image of the horror of caring. Oh, wow. And that's when I got myself out of bed. And I picked up my camera. Part two, the comeback. Weakness is clarity. Love is weakness. Weakness is clarity. She's processing her grief, her loss. The only way an artist can. There was something in the dark. Something I needed to see, to show. The more shadows I photographed and filmed, the more I felt like I was on the verge of a breakthrough. I submerged myself in it. I only went out at night. My search became obsessive, but I still had no idea what I was looking for. Part three, clarity is purpose. Love is weakness, weakness is clarity, clarity is purpose. Purpose is? There's a world hidden behind ours. A dark tide ebbing and flowing against reality. Faces in the shadows. Fear of the dark is really just fear of what could be that, that vast, paralyzing ocean. But photography can freeze reality in a snapshot, put a cage around the infinite and capture it. I need to prove those faces are really there. The Dark Place of Alice Wake. Part four, the realization purpose is strength. Love is weakness, weakness is clarity, clarity is purpose, purpose is strength, love is strength. Let's dive in. of a novel. Return. A horror story about the dark presence escaping from the dark place, taking over Bright Falls. I couldn't remember writing it. I had not written it. I would never write this. I knew who had. Scratch. A monster with my face. If this story came true, Scratch would get out, people would die. Destroying the manuscript, it wouldn't stop it from happening. I would have to fix it, edit it. I could not change the genre of the story. I'd have to work within the constraints set by Scratch. I needed someone in the story to fight the darkness. Saga Anderson. I kept seeing her in my visions. She was already in Bright Falls, already involved, but she was not in return. Not yet. I'd write her in, try to stop Scratch within the limits of the horror story. It was almost impossible. It was taking too long. I had not reached the end. End of part. 
That was a quick part. Uh, okay. <laughs> Gustavo Plays says, I'm a little behind in the stream because I paused for the story. But I find it weird that Saga instantly thinks that Wake, Wake wrote Logan in. She knows Scratch has been editing the story, lol. Well, I think as we just learned, and I know you wrote that before this last cutscene. But I, I think as we just learned, Return was Scratch's story. It was Wake who was editing Return in order to defeat the darkness, to write the darkness out of Bright Falls. And he had to write Saga in, because Saga wasn't in Return. But he saw Saga. He knows she was there. So he had to write Saga in, and presumably her daughter as well. I guess we'll find out how that resolves itself. This winding road Don't you ever let me go Forever I am the play and pretend Forever and ever Won't it wait to end This message that you send And do the lyrics of this song change? It's a different song, but it's the same song. The last song talked about looping forever. Now it's winding forever. There we go. Forever loops forever. Man, it's it, it, would, it would take forever to piece this all together. <laughs> all right. Scratch stopped me before I could finish my edits to the manuscript. The memory of my edits was already fading. Terrible things would happen if the manuscript came true. Scratch was there, at Parliament Tower, undoing my work. He could use the story to escape. He could go after Alice. Zane had said we worked on Return together. That was a lie. Scratch wrote Return. I would pay Zane another visit. He had guided me to two murder sites. I needed a new one to get back to Parliament Tower. A new draft of initiation. Initiation 7 masks. But now we're flooded. Talk to Mr. Door.
I don't have time for this, so let's get it over with. Tell me, was this all fake? A show? No one said otherwise, Mr. Wake. It was to indulge you, but we can stop pretending now. Uh, masks come off. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. I don't even think you know who's under your mask. But you know how to make things difficult for yourself. All these rules. Endless, convoluted loops you insist on going through. You are so lucky. You know. There are so many people helping you. Armies of people. Myself. Your wife. Alice. I need to get to her. She's in danger. She is. Because of you. And so is someone important to me. Someone you pulled into this. You keep opening doors. Peeking in. Reaching through to get what you want, and that puts you in my path. Is Mr. Dorsaga's husband? I don't know husband? what you're talking about. I have to go now. Maybe you will make it through this time. This has gone on long enough. This and our night springs, it was a nice distraction. It's Her time dad. someone gave me a straight answer here. The next time we meet, the circumstances will be very different. And you would do well to return the favor by playing your part. Or stay out of my way, Mr. Wig. Whatever you say. I said husband, but Door, I- Door, Zane, the masks were finally coming off. Was it a sign I was closer to escaping? I had no time to waste. I said husband, but I meant dad because David is her husband, but her father was unknown to her. And it must be Mr. Door. God, how to get out of here? They're not fading the way they there used to. Comes. Here is the light at the end of the tunnel. If you... Huma, <laughs> lauta, that held you close, Tom. Ei muuttako on, vaan set the granny in the snow. When the panic is biggest, the help is also near. Dor didn't seem happy to see me this time. Fearing the master is the root of wisdom. But don't let the game get you down. 
He's playing his role. Maybe put him in your films, Tom. Like you have put me. <laughs> what films? <laughs> I'm a fan of your masterworks. Uh, there is Tom the Poet, my favorite. And Uerden Uer is the most famous one, of course. And is it true what I hear? That it's coming back to cinema soon? Is there a bottom to this rumor? I need to get back to my apartment. Can you help me? Well, plan is half done. You asked me to make sure you won't forget the... Uh, the... The... Valokuva oli? The light pictures. The photos you artist wife took. Uh, they are waiting in the shoe box in the basement. What you leave behind, you find in front of you. Okay. Thanks, Adi. Find the shoebox in the basement. Right. Basement. First floor shortcut. Basement shortcut. Exit. find Alice's photos in a shoebox. Hmm. Okay. I guess I didn't need to turn it. These were Alice's photos. I recognized the style. One showed the clicker sinking into darkness. The other showed a light in the shape of a bullet. They were important even if I didn't know what to do with them yet. Now, escape. <laughs> right. I need to get all the way back to laundry and then to the staircase and down the hallway. That's going to lead to the exit. Thank you. 
I escaped. Yay. End of part. Another song? <laughs> We're just getting through all of them. It's the same song. Alright, I'm not gonna listen to it all this time. Now you're falling apart. The light is a poisonous, poisonous but, dart. But this is all different. Forever seeking out the darkest part. Forever, forever. Interesting. The light is a poisonous dart. I'm drowning. I'm drowning. I'm drowning. There's no way out. There's no way out. It's deeper, deeper, deeper. This is hell. I'm hell. I died. I died. Oh, she was dead. Oh, she's dead. 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 She's
Okay. To find Thomas Zane. Zane's room, 665, was upstairs. The elevator would take me there. Thank you. We need a new murder site. The ghosts are saying something else now, too. They were repeating his name, Alan Wake, over and over again, but now they're repeating some of the things that he said in his delirious rant. Okay, Tom. Where are you, Tom? Oh, don't tell me. Something told me Zane wouldn't be happy to see me this time. I'm in control now. The second you try anything, I will shoot you in the head! Scratch wrote return, not me. You're a fucking liar. You'd given up. You stopped writing. You said it was too dangerous, that, that we didn't deserve to get out. And then he showed up. Scratch, he promised to write, to get me the hell out of here. He was magnificent. A visionary. Turn and left me behind. It's still here, and so is he. I know I fucked up. But you can still catch him before he gets out, before he gets to your wife. And when you get to him, don't hesitate. Kill the bastard for what he did to us. There's a murder site in my cinema where my film Nightless Night is playing. You notice how whenever he appears at Doors Studio, after he dies, the first thing he does... Oh, mercy. Thousands have gone missing beyond the labyrinth of me. When you're lost, you're lost in your own company. And cut! He does that. Oh. Now that is drama. Okay. What the fuck? I had a million questions about Zane, but I had more pressing concerns. Yeah, I've got a million questions about Zane too. All right, in his cinema, there's a murder site. Where's his cinema? The ballroom? Back at reception? Initiation 8 Zane's film. I had to find the movie theater Poet's Cinema. The next murder site was there. 
Zane had created the film in tandem with Return to escape the dark place. Oh, the cinema. It's gonna be outside the hotel. Okay, talk show studio, Ocean View Hotel. Here's where I am in the rooftops above here. Uh, Calder Caldera Street Station. Go to Poet Cinema, exit the hotel. Well, then maybe I don't need to go this way. I just need to go out the front gate. So I should take the elevator instead of going out the walkway. I think I'm about to take the long way. And I don't want to do that. Instead, I need to take the elevator down to get back to the lobby and go out the front door. Where's the elevator? It was right there. Are they going to make me go through the rooftops again? There we go. Was that? Did you hear that? Sounded like a radio for a moment there. Okay. I could see the searchlight beams of the movie theater on the far side of the plaza. There we go. Follow the spotlights in the sky.
Sunny Fusion Sunrise says, thanks for playing Alan Wake 2 for me. You're welcome. I'm having a blast with this game. These ghost guys, I hate them. I never know which one. going on. Almost out of healing. Ian Curry became a bronze ox. Thank you, Ian Curry. And he says, Hi, Ox, I've been following you for years. Love everything you do. Fallout 4, nobody can touch you. <laughs> well, thank you, Ian Curry. That's extremely kind of you. Now we just gotta navigate our way through Alan Wake 2. Let's see, we've got the garage door over there. Huh, and a door here. The it's door locked. wouldn't budge. So this way. There's the cinema. <sighs> okay, where am I? Where am I? Uh, over here. Did I pass by a bunch of containers? <laughs> Do I risk going back for all these containers that I missed? All right, we've got a couple of echoes here.
Hey. Yes, please. Oops. in his image. <laughs> Just like us, he is an uncaring, cruel son of a bitch. Having made it in heaven, he doesn't want us there, dirtying up all that nice white upholstery. And he doesn't want to reach down to help us. He gets his kicks just binge-watching us struggling, hurting, killing, dying, screwing it up again and again. Lazily stirring it up when things threaten to get too placid. This city is only here to satisfy his sick, voyeuristic pleasure. <clears throat> right. Well, that's one echo. There's another in the middle of the street as well as a couple of containers and locked doors. The theater appeared to be closed. Maybe the ticket could still get me in. Okay. We'll be back. Now to line up that echo. A container to the right. A container down the, the alley. There it is. Something kept me going. A broken man. No hope, no prospects, no love. Too stubborn to die. Like a cockroach with a misguided sense of honor and justice in a city where there can never be justice. And then one down this alley. Okay, <clears throat> that leaves going into the cinema and getting a couple of containers that were back down this alley.
Let all those guys respawn. Uh, I'll get them later. The cinema lobby was a gateway to other realities on the silver screen. I could set a scene here. Locate the murder site. I need to get up there to complete the eclipse. looking for the cult of the word for a lifetime or more. The only case I'd ever been on. They would surface from the dark with their depraved acts of violence and fade back into the night, leaving behind bloody crime scenes and clues heavy with obscure meanings that led nowhere. Arriving at the cinema, I felt them monumental terrifying revelation trembling before me ready to open its jaws and swallow me whole this place had significance to the cult there was something to use there <laughs> and that gave me a plot for the plot board here at the lobby let's explore the lobby first Stop writing at some point? I can't stop. There's too much at stake. God, my inventory. Okay, uh, I have so many first aid kits. There's only two slots available. There we go. Map of the cinema. Nice.
<laughs> Inventory full. I needed whoops. I needed a new draft of the story. One that would get me ahead of scratch. Okay, uh, let's deal with the loot first. I need to open up two slots. Shotgun is ridiculous. Need help. Good luck. Okay. Let's move this. I should have one of these on hand, and I should definitely have some of these. Right, let's set the stage. The main event was the murder. I had to find my way to it. Cult of the Word. first step toward the murder site, I was making progress. New cigar. Someone had barricaded themselves in the room. Was missing something.
Word of fix found. I increased maximum health. I could increase the amount of health restored in safe havens. Or restores 50% of max health when a new word of power is discovered. That's rare, so let's do this. Okay, so that must have been for the echo that we got there. And that's for the word of power that we got there. Okay, I wonder if we need to do something in the other reality to open the way in this one? the scene. ceremony. And so we made our new members believe. Two of New York's finest. They had performed endless favors to earn their place among us. We had something special waiting for them. And something very special for you, Alex Casey. Who's your leader? Alan Wake? Hmm? Scratch? Zane? Give me a name! You will meet him soon enough. There was no end to the corruption. It fit the genre, so I'd use it. Well, that was Ilmo. And we've got a new piece for the plot board. The big question is, do we use it here? Or elsewhere? New York's finest. situated differently yet again. Well. Ah. There we go. That's our way forward. Out of curiosity, I'm going to head upstairs just to see if anything changed topside. Still can't get out that door. All right, nothing changed. And we've got a theater hall. And three different scenes to explore in the theater hall. We'll start with this scene. We've got a light that we can capture.
What did that change? Aside from just summoning bad guys. Brad Ludwig says the penny drops on Saga's dad. Yeah, I think we know who he is now. done some digging. To film freaks, he was a mythic auteur in the art house cinema. A rising star coming to America from Finland. But he only created one film. Tom the Poet. Before he went missing. Mirroring the vanishing of the main character in the movie. Played by himself. The biggest mystery was around his lost film. An early work made in Finland, Nightless Night, rumored to have mystic properties. Some claimed it was a snuff film, that the ritual murder in the film was an actual murder. There were no known surviving copies, but the cult chased it as if it were their unholy grail, just like Wake's books were. In this scene, we get an echo. Let's change scenes. Let's do New York's Finest. My writing was affecting reality. So they were tortured and interrogated here on stage. Well. Let's see if that changes anything up here. Cops had gotten their 15 minutes of fame with the cult, and it had been a scream. They were the murder victims. I had to find a way into the projection booth somehow. Into the projection booth. It was locked from the other side. Maybe... Let's try the other scene. Cult of the Word. and hoods pretending to be a secret society. Maybe it is you who's playing a role, Mr. Casey. A role carefully laid out for you. A puppet blindly performing the ritual steps for the glory of the cult. 
Huh? What the fuck have you been smoking? Nightless night. A clip of the lost film survived. You will see, Mr. Casey. In the Nightless Night, you will finally see. Nightless Night was Zane's film. It played a role in this story. That gave us another clip. Watch the fragment of film. Okay. Okay, well, geez. All right, well, I think they give us a new plot on the plot board, so... Clip of the last film. What is this? Transfer the light in my lamp to his. Wake. Revealed a door. about the projection booth. Good scene for dark deeds. Out in the night, a brand new scene. All right, so I need to investigate the alley before I can get to the projector booth. What? Oh dear. Okay. Well, we're back in the alley. Uh, where are we on the map here? Uh, way in here in the back lot. We've got an echo, two echoes, and a word of power.
Do we have any scenes for this one? Yeah, we have all three of these. That's a lot of exploration. All right, let's start with this one. Inventory is full, it's because I got way too many of these. We'll move them over. And I've got more flare gun ammo. We'll move that over. Let's go ahead and use that. Might as well. That's the door we dropped down. So let's go up. Whereupon we find a door to the projection booth, it looks like. Let's change scenes. Cult of the Word. Change the details of the world. Did that open the door? It did not open the door. Let's see what it changed. I should work this out on a plot board. Well, that's what I'm doing, right? Yeah. That just leads to the safe room. So what changed in this scene? Yeah, let's try another one. It was Cult of the Word. Let's try New York's Finest. Didn't open the door. The police car felt important to the story. Okay, we can take the light from the police car. We'll do that in just a second. There's an echo here. I knew I was making progress. I had to keep going. There it is. You don't think they're gonna want us to, like, cut off a finger or something for this initiation, do you? Nah, I'm sure we'll just chant some ceremonial stuff. N nothing to it. Well, it's about time. We paid our dues, made plenty of their problems disappear. 
dumped all those nobodies down that chute. What we did or didn't do, it's all behind us now. We're going straight to the top, partner. Yep, like we died and went to heaven. One more. Clip of the lost film. Still can't open the door. In the city trapped in eternal night, they watch the film where the night never arrives where the night hides in your mind. Every time we approach that, we hear screams. But so far, none of these are opening up that top door. changed. go. Straight to the top. The dirty cops looked down to the city. Their city. They had committed repulsive deeds to get there. They told themselves it was worth it.
I'm not gonna have room for all of this. Inventory full. Hey, word of stuff. Expands Alan's inventory by one row, yes. Yay, I finally did it. Side. Well, we've got our humming guy. to see another sane face. Not sure how sane I'm feeling. Be careful out there, Tim. If you see me, make sure it's really me. Not some psycho wearing my face. Sounds like you've been having a rough go. I've been there. The missing time. The aliens. Missing time? It's the same thing I've been saying. The dreams. It's sometimes I wake up in a completely different place missing entire days. I have no idea what happened, but I'm trying to find out. Things always get better if you just keep moving forward, Alan. Wait, what's this about aliens? Oh, uh, I was just convinced that everything going on with me was because of aliens. Abductions, signals beamed into my head, that kind of thing. Now I know it's been Dor all along. I haven't ruled out him being an alien, though. What else has he learned about Dor? The red-headed woman connected to Dor. I know her. Where do I know her from? Her identity changes. Connected to polyhedrons? Will she come for me? Dor went missing in 1988. Age? Has not aged. Longevity? Not human? Alien? Magic? Uncle Frank would have known more, but he's dead. Not his real name? Hidden meaning? UFOs, polyhedrons, I see them in my dream. Poet Cinema map updated. Oh, it looks like I didn't miss any containers over there. That's good. There's a container there, and a container there. Okay, that's where I came from. And we found a safe spot. We're going to do a hard save. And that's it for now. I'm actually over time by nearly 20 minutes. 
That's all for Alan Wake 2 today. Thanks for joining me as we continue to navigate through this very uh, interesting and intricate plot. Um, for the rest of this week, Starfield tomorrow, we'll continue with Baldur's Gate 3 on Wednesday and back with more Scotch and Smoke Rings and Robocop for Thursday. That's the plan for the week. I'll let you know if anything changes. Thanks, everyone, for joining me for today. Have a wonderful rest of your Monday, and I'll see you all again very soon with more lore videos and more live streams. Bye-bye now. <laughs>